expect everything to go horribly wrong. I'm aware. <laughs> it was a rhetorical statement. Okay. <laughs> Now then. Ooh, my spine. It's a very weird thing to say, Are but okay. Are you twisting your spine again? I am cracking my spine. <laughs> okay. Our band of adventurers have been tasked with defeating the Bandit King, who currently threatens Gunmar's ground. Through your various missions and objectives, you have been able to c take back control of most of the land around the town, and most recently, have obtained information involving three names that seem to be connected to this bandit king. With new intel from one of your friends, Kalamin, you have all been given the simple mission to infiltrate this main base and to defeat the Bandit King. I just realized my volume is way the fuck up, and that's not going to be good when I start yelling. <laughs> Before you begin your quest to the main base, you have decided to do various means, such as Gil heading towards the monastery, owned by Brother Nara, and Raimi and Haas heading towards Gura's Gunt. So now, we continue our story, starting with... Raimi and Haas. Raimi, as you approach Gura's goods, you can hear the distinct sound of yelling from inside the shop. You can see a few guards cautiously looking at the door, but not approaching it. Okay. As you approach the door, you can see in the window Murdoch and Gura are staring at each other. There's various bits of old bottles and such that have been thrown around and broke. You can see one of the chairs nearby is in pieces, and they are. It's a It's surprising. You know that orcs skin color is predominantly green, but these two had somehow able to go as close to as red in the face as you can get with that skin color. Can I ask the guard what, what he thinks? Uh, so you beckon over to the nearby guard who cautiously walks up and just looks in and says, Um, well, I uh, saw the one-armed one uh, walk in, um, and then just crashing and yelling. I've, I've been told strictly not to go in there. They've, uh, that family's known to have a bit of a temper. Um, okay, I'll just, I'll try to open the door. Okay, the door is open, and for a few seconds you can hear them just yelling at each other. It's going to be really difficult to do both of them. Until eventually, <laughs> and I'll just quickly see. Yeah. Um, and then you see Gurog's head look to left, look back to Murdoch, then snap back and says, And what the fuck are you doing here? I just, I just laugh to myself and say, what, why are you getting mad at me for? I don't give a damn who you are. Get out! At this point, Murdoch speaks and says, Oh, well, let me guess, you're gonna yell at her after she saved me. Yeah. You're just the same as I thought you were, Pops. Garag turns back to Murdoch. I am not your pops. Murdoch died the second he left this town. You're just some lookalike. Get out! And you see him grab a ball and just throw it, which Murdoch just casually dodges to the side. Do you do anything? Uh, who's, who's left inside the room? Uh, Murdoch and Gurag are the only ones in there. Hoss is waiting outside. 
So it's just you, Murdoch, and Gura. I got the orc and ask him what he was arguing about. Um, as you do this, Gura grabs another ball and throws it at you. Uh, so that misses. It flies clear over your shoulder and smashes into the door frame. At which point, Murdoch steps between you and uh, and Gura. You're pissed off at me, not her. And as and after a few seconds, Gurak just steps back. Looks like he's rummaging for more stuff, but while he does that, Murdoch just turns to look at you. According to him, I'm dead. Because I ran away and become a bandit. At this point, Gurak says, You became what I told you not to be! Okay, I, um, I face Gurrock and I say, Murdoch is not a bandit. I, I was the one who rescued him. Oh, well, good for you. At this point, Murdoch just, tur Murdoch turns to Gurrock and says, What is it about the bandits that you hate, then? I became a bandit, so what? I'm back. I'd say I'd learned my lesson, and he shrugs his shoulder, which has no arm. <laughs> At this point, Gorag just... You can see he's, he was about to throw another ball, but he just... His arm is just shaking in pure rage before he puts it down hard. You actually see the bottle crack at the bottom slightly, but it still holds. And he just leans heavily on the desk. Listen to me. When you were a kid, your mom was killed by bandits. And as far as I'm aware, anyone who becomes a bandit is dead. Why should I take a bandit back in? What's to say you won't kill me next? Murdoch just lapses into pure silence. What you doing, Remy? They're just staring at each other in pure silence here, and you're still standing there. <laughs> I say... Um, so, can I buy anything? Or can we go to sell anything? Like, can Haas just speak in and be like, not the time? Uh... I would say no, because Haas is outside, but Murdoch does, like, turn around. He... He's definitely still looking incredibly angry, he says. Look, it's, uh... Probably not best, we... He looks back at Gura. We've... Got some things to take care of. Okay, then I'll just leave. Okay. So as you leave, the uh, guard that you back and said... Um, is the situation in there, um, okay? I don't want to go in there if I get asked to. Yes, it's okay. You can go inside. Uh, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll take a word for it. Um, I'll just, um... And he just steps, puts his, like, back to the window, stands next to the door for him and just looks to be he's on guard at this point, but he keeps looking back over his shoulder into the shop nervously. Alright. So, uh, this is going to be difficult. Um, so with instructions from Volker, Gil heads towards the monastery that's in town. As he approaches, he sees the normal assortment of cut wooden piles and supplies up at the, at the front of it. As Gil walks in, he sees 
that Nara is sitting with his back to him, meditating. As he walks in, Nara slowly lifts his head up and says, I know why you are here. It's the same reason that Volker came. Is it not? For roleplay purposes, uh, Blaze, can you roleplay as Gil? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I think it was best that I come. Why are you here, then? Well, you see... I'm here to learn how to defend myself using my cans so I don't end up killing people or, um, biting. Nara slowly stands up and stares at, for the sake of it, I'll just say that you are Gil at this point, um, stares directly at you. His face is very stern. You say, bite people. What do you mean? I'd rather not go into detail. Let's just say I'm not exactly in favor with the... my gods right now. And who might that be? Meridia. His eyes narrow at this. You tell me that you come into my monastery with the ire of your deity, one which many people in Tamriel would consider a good Daedra. I wish for you to be truthful with me, then. What is it that you have done which has angered your deity? Well, during this fight, I may have joined in with these druids and biting and a bit off the face of this one bandit. I didn't eat I didn't eat the flesh. I, I just bit off the face. It, it just happened. Our order does not treat hand to hand fighting as some barbaric cannibalism. Our order focuses on the strength of our mind and body. Why should I teach somebody who seemed all too willing in the heat of a moment to consume the face of another? Because I, I made a mistake and I'm paying for it. I, I don't want to do that again. It was, it was disgusting and I feel just... Uh, I just feel all gross. I'm going to do a persuasion roll for Gil because I got his sheet up here. He's doing good disadvantage. Yeah. At this point, Nara slams his fist down on the ground, causing a loud cracking echo sound. As he looks up to you once more, he says, I have spoken. Leave this monastery and never return. You taint okay. this place with your desires of flesh. Okay, okay. Alright, so Gil very quickly vacates the monastery, and as he looks over his shoulder, he sees Nara once again just turning back towards the large tapestry of his order. Uh... Dark's already said what he was planning to do, which he did. Uh, Mitch, given you weren't here, uh, is there anything that you wish to do before resting for the night? Uh...
I would probably just read a book if I had one on me or around me, but last I checked, there weren't any, like, around here. Uh, oh, there, weren't, really there weren't any of significant value. There was a bookshop, but you know for, that it's mostly just, like, just one of the mill, like, basic books that you'd read. A couple of fancy novels, etc. Nothing super crazy. I'd probably pick up just a generic one at the shop then. Uh, something not super high price. Let's see. Like So... So you're saying the shop does not have something like the Lusty Argonian made? <laughs> he actually does. Several <laughs> copies of it, in fact. Oh, wow. That's run of the mill? <laughs> I'll probably buy, like, some random person's biography. How much okay. would that cost? Uh, so for the cost of two gold pieces... You buy the life and endurances of Jonathan Winterfold. Jonathan Winterfold. Let me. Let me. Uh, I gotta find it on here. I can't help but feel this is a Game of Thrones reference. It isn't. I don't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm just saying that straight off the bat. I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't know anything about Game of Thrones outside of love dicks in it. Figuratively and literally. I will read Jonathan Winterhold's biography as I turn in for the evening. Okay. You only get a few chapters in, but this guy seems to be on one hell of an ego trip. <laughs> I like it already. Okay. As you... My all turn in for the night after arriving and finishing the various things that you have done uh, you go to sleep once more this is again really difficult because Gil's not here but so again Blaze you're filling in for Gil at this point uh -huh. so as you as you slumber Gil you suddenly find yourself standing in a dark void. Looking around, you can see nothing but blackness, but looking down at yourself, it's almost as if there are no shadows on you. You are perfectly illuminated. As you look, you see a figure appear from the void, almost as if it materializes there. It's a golden light in the shape of a female woman. Of course, because why wouldn't it be? Why the hell am I thinking, me? Improv. <laughs> God damn. And you can see in her hand she's clutching a bright yellow apple, which she slowly hands which she slowly hands out to you. Can I take and look at the apple? Sure. So as you pick up the apple, it's it feels incredibly light. Something you it's almost as if it's air, but looking at it, it seems to be an apple, but it's just yellow. Hmm. Yellow apples. I have not heard of such craziness. This must be something divine. <sighs> the Golden figure is still just... it. It's featureless. Like, it doesn't have a face, but you have a feeling that it's looking right at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if it's waiting for something. So, uh... Do you want to sh share this? It slowly shakes its head at you. Can Gil try to see if he can tell if this figure is his god? Make a religion check. Oh, wait, I can do that for him. I've got a shield up yeah. here. I'll do the check. Mm -hmm. He assumes so? He's not too sure? <laughs> he hasn't seen any pictures of what 
his god looks like? Hmm. So, does this mean we're all we're cool over the whole, you know, incident? The uh, figure just slowly points towards the apple and then to where the mouth would be. And then nods. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if I'm all that hungry or where I am, but I... Can Gil sniff the apple? Sure, uh, in that the case, because... Actually, yeah, it doesn't really matter, it's not proficient in either of them, so I'll just do it. Wow, Gil actually rolled good in that. As... as so Gil, as you focus and look down at the apple, you see it starts to shimmer slightly. And as it does, the yellow starts to go into a dark red color. You see its shape go from this perfectly apple-shaped thing into something more akin to a heart. And as you look, you watch as what was once a golden apple has now became a still-beating human heart. As you look up at the golden figure, you can see that what was once a golden light in the shape of a woman is now still a, still a female, but with pitch black hair so dark that it almost melds into the void around you. You see her skin, while mostly fair, has various pocket marks of missing skin and flesh. And in those missing sections you can see slugs, insects, various repulsive things moving in and around it. And as you look into her eyes, you can see her eyes are pure red, gradually fading to white pupils as she looks directly at you. So, is your faith is not as blind as I thought. Tell me, do you know who I am? A zombie! Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> Maybe this. This might jog your memory. She clicks her fingers, and all of a sudden, the flesh from the bandit, which you remember biting into, once again fills your mouth. <laughs> As you spit it out, I'm going to say he can roll a religion check with advantage for this. Okay. So I'll do that for him. Really? At this point, you realize that this is not the deity that you follow. This is someone else. <sighs> Uh, be God, uh, zombie! Just as Gil holds his fingers out in the shape of a cross. <laughs> <laughs> you honestly think such words are going to affect me? Me, the queen of cannibalism. Hmm. Such a shame. <laughs> you would probably be one that I would enjoy mm -hmm. playing with. <clears throat> That's oh, Shadow, what... you came in at the right time. Oh, perfect. Shadow. Yes. Long, <laughs> long story <laughs> short, you are in a dream right now. Shit's gone down. <laughs> oh, it's going. You're in a dream, a golden <clears throat> figure, handed out an apple, you got good in a possession check for once, and it turned into a human heart, and now you've got like what looks like a zombie staring at you. And it's speaking to you. And you okay. think she's a zombie? Yeah. 
<laughs> so just hop on in and uh, watch my calls it. I'll just continue on with that. So I don't know how much of that stuff you heard before. Basically, the zombie lady person's just saying that you'd be a good toy. Hmm. Okay. I I'm uh, signing in right now. Okay. Uh, you can just keep doing the role playing stuff though while you do that if you can multitask. Mm -hmm. So, the zombie-like creature slowly starts to reach out and starts to run her hand down the side of your face. As she does, several of the insects jump off her hand and start crawling on you. Uh, how... how... okay, I, sorry, I did... <laughs> I know, it's you're kind of jumping right into the middle of this, I'm sorry. It's fine, so, so she handed me an apple. Yep, uh, and then you looked at... she tried exactly to make you hard. eat it... You looked at it, you got good on your perception for once, and oh uh, you and it turned into a human heart in front of your eyes. And this, she was originally a golden figure, a female in shape. She's now what looks like a, essentially a zombie female with insects running about in all the ripped out bits of flesh and such. Mm -hmm. Well then, uh, I don't know how much space I have, but I... Uh... You have no idea. You are in a complete black void. There is no- you can't see anything outside of yourself and her. Hmm. Well, can I- Okay, so I never used this ability before, and I don't know- can I use any abilities in here? You can <clears throat> certainly try. It might be bad, but can I use my div the the paladin's divine sense in here? No, sure. Back. So that divine sense, I believe that's where you can basically undead, evil, etc. I can sense strong evil, and I can sense uh, powerful good. Like, all right, I yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. It's essentially it's essentially good and evil. Um, yeah. You can feel the entire area radiating with some faint evil. Hmm. Well, I'm just gonna... I, I back away from her. I, I refuse to be deceived. So as you step back, you can, you can feel yourself moving backwards, but the distance between you and her doesn't change. We're, at this dimension, though, she says... So, you don't wish to abandon your god for me? Uh, absolutely not. I've, I've made mistakes in the past, but I'm set on this course now, and I won't turn back. You may call them mistakes, but to me, it's just simply the way things go. But fine, the bitch can have her toy. But know this, Gil. Should you ever wish to come into my fold, and she like w pulls that pulls pulls out her arm, kind of like a welcoming gesture, then my house will always be open to you. And with that, everything just goes into pitch blackness, and suddenly you wake up at a star, and you are once again inside your room drenched in sweat again but you're awake as you look outside you can see the first telltale signs of dawn coming along uh, I offer up a oh wait give me a second wait it's, it's still it's still me right yeah What do, you mean, what do you mean it's still you? Uh, I mean, like, uh, I can still do stuff. I yeah. don't know if I was, like, in shock or anything. No, no, no. You, you, you're, you're, obviously, you're, you're somewhat in shock. Like, obviously, you just had... You don't know what the hell that was. But you're awake. And you can see just outside I, that the... It's clear that you are back. You are not in, like, this void area. You are back in the real world. Well, I... The, the first thing I do is I, I pray... Pray to the, the god, say, uh, Meridia, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I just say that like, 
I I won't I won't stray from the path, even though like I made mistakes. She's but definitely got I... your attention on. She's def You can definitely feel she that you have her attention, but at the same time, you've got this niggling feeling in the back of your head that someone else is also watching. I don't know who that was, but. If you want, because you've shown up. I know I've, I did the religion check before, and it was a botched even with advantage, but I'll let you do another religion check. Another Okay. So, no advantage this time? Cause no, I just wrong. normal. Okay. Uh, religion. Here it is. I have plus zero religion as well. You're not proficient but... in it. Yeah. None. You know that there's a Daedra that. She mentioned the Queen of Cannibalism. You know there's a Daedra like that, but you don't. The name eludes you. I don't remember exactly who that was, but next time I see her, I will be her enemy. Alright. So. And I'll. Yeah, you I'll win. try fighting her next time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll win. But well, I mean, you're, say, you're saying you that won't. to the DM, and it's like it's... Or, or are you just saying it? Are you saying this as I'm guilty yourself? I'm saying to I'm saying it to, like, I'm praying, oh. and I'm like, next time I see her, I will oh, okay. try to take her out. <laughs> you don't feel any change in anything, anything. really, no? <laughs> just the same no. cautious look and that same feeling that someone else is also watching. So, as you get what little sleep is left in the day you all come to consciousness once more uh, except for Hart who is still sound asleep just yeah he you, you try to wake him up but he doesn't even stir no, he's just, he's out like He a, is out like a light. At this point, Volker, um, is also, he's up, but he's looking at Hoss, and then looks at you guys and says, Uh, maybe it'd be best if, uh, I keep an eye on this one. If the bandits attack, then, uh, we don't want him caught asleep. I'll keep an eye on him. True. True. We need Hoss to hold the front line. <laughs> Yeah, you know, this might be best. Uh, let's face it, points to the two of them. We are not exactly uh, good at the whole sneaky stealth thing. I know that uh, Gil hasn't made that problem with the armor, but different story. Uh, yes. we'll, stay, we'll stay here. Uh, we'll make sure that if worse comes to worse, we'll be here to hold the line. Of course. All right. Do me a favor. Kick that bandit king's ass for me as well. <laughs> it shall be done, my friend. Okay. I say with a bow. He, uh, Volker salutes you before just like, heading downstairs to do his normal thing. Okay, so. The five of you, what are you doing? <laughs> Can I return to the shop? Sure. As you return to Gura's goods, you can see that there is another guard there, but it's not the same one as before. And looking inside, you can see Gura and Murdoch both in the shop still. Murdoch is sitting on the floor, just head down, seems to be either asleep or in focus, you don't know. Gura is just looking out, occasionally st looking at Murdoch. Okay, is, is there any other shop that sells, um, like gems or amulets? Nope, not that you know of. Uh, Gumbar's Ground is a very small town. It only has a population of around 50. So it's an incredibly small town. Which is why it's odd that the garrison is so large. Uh, I'll knock on the door then. 
Okay. Uh, Gura just looks at you uh, through the window. Does he look mad or... Oh, he always looks mad. Uh, but he doesn't look as mad as he... Uh, he doesn't look as mad as he did when he was arguing with Murdoch. <laughs> okay, I just don't go in. Yep. So, as you walk in, Murdoch stirs and looks up at you and just watches as you walk by. As you come up to the uh, front part, Gurak just says, All right, what do you want? Oh, well, before you tried to almost kill me yesterday, I was going to tell you something important. Yeah? I was recommended to your fine shop by the Imperial lady from the other shop. Well, of course it would. I'm the only general's shop available now. At least one that doesn't do the basic stuff, like Reginald's girl. Yeah, and she said you have some special items at the back of your shop. His eyes narrow that. Where I keep my contraband is none of anyone's business. But yes, I do. What is it that you're looking for? Can you give me a few samples of your contraband, and I'll pay the price for them? Make a persuasion check. Um, see. He thinks about it for a second and just goes under his desk a bit and pulls out a, sm a small bit of parchment. Uh, let's see. Got a few scrolls, one of fireball, one of magic armor. Uh, you already got that belt. And there's a book of mage hand. That's all the stuff that I got from Nora's store. That's all I've got special contraband-wise. Can you take out the fireball from the back? Sure. He looks to Murdoch. Hey, bandit, keep an eye on this one. <clears throat> and he turns around and goes into the shop. At this point, Murdoch is now standing up, leaning against the wall, just slowly staring, quietly staring at you. Okay, as, as he's gone to the back, I want to put the items I stole in the other shop onto the shelf, onto a shelf yeah. of Murdoch's site. The, the shop isn't very big. It's only about 15 feet by 15 feet. And it is, like, the shelves are on the side of the walls. There's no actual middle shelves. So I'd say you can do this, yeah. but you'd be doing a slight hand check with disadvantage. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so what do you guys think of my lovely drawing? Of Ger Gerner. You have to time it very carefully, but eventually you're able to put the various bits and pieces that you stole from the previous shop in. Murdoch doesn't seem to notice you. You're only able to get about a quarter of the stuff that you stole on there before uh, Gura comes out from the back room clutching a scroll. Right, uh... So for this... Hold on, Puffer's barking up a storm, be right back. Okay. Doggo. So, for this, uh, I'd say about 400 gold for it. Places a scroll down. 400 gold? Yeah, let's not magical users use magic. Okay, I'll, I will be back later with the money, and I'll just walk out the shop. Okay, you hear him curse under his breath at that. He, you see him forcefully grab the scroll and just head back into the back. 
Murdoch still watching you the entire time. Can I return to the Imperial shop? Uh, yeah, to the uh, to the very low end general store one with Reginald's uh, girl. Yeah, you can you can do that. I'll, I'll just walk in the shop. That's mm -hmm. normal. Uh, oh yes, uh, you. You're the um, you're the one from yesterday, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah. How how can I help you? Oh, what's wrong? You you seem a bit nervous. Oh uh, well, I uh, I think I might have misplaced a few of the things. It it was nothing valuable, of course, but uh, a father's not. Hmm. I, I do this sometimes. I sometimes misplace things. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so cute. Yeah, well, well, do you need somebody to help you find them? Oh, uh, no, no, it's it's fine. Um, It shouldn't go too much out of everything. It, it was only a few, like, inkwells and such. Um, we have more than Did you just say inkwells? Uh, yes, yes, uh, just just a few run the mill inkwells, nothing too big. They're like, uh, do, do you want one? They're, they're a gold apiece. Oh, I, just, I saw an inkwell at the uh, Grimoire shop. A Gura's? Hmm. That, yeah. that won't surprise me. We 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 have all the general kind of stock here. It's just uh, Gura and Nora are kind of a bit more... Um, they they have connections, or... Well, Gura did. So, um, do you sell any kind of books that... Useful to know. Oh, uh, those kind of books. Uh, I'm afraid not. Um, G Gizmore um, over at the uh, the Reading Worm uh, has a few books, but uh, I don't think he uh, sells many of them either. Yeah, I went to a shop and he seemed a bit useless. Uh, so that's why I come to you. I'm afraid I don't. Um, I know Nora had a book or two, but uh, she's currently um, not here right now, I'm afraid. Okay, I'll, I'll just take that ink, ink pot off here. Uh, certainly, that'll, that'll be a gold. Uh, here you go. She passed you. It's a, it's a run the mill inkwell. Just full of normal old ink. Wait, was it the same inkwell Drayden gave to her? You don't know that. <laughs> you're not there. I know, I was just asking. You don't just know, you're not there. <laughs> okay. Uh, hmm. Okay, so. Oh. Alright, that's fine. We can keep going as we yeah, are. So how much time do you have left in the morning? Uh, you would Before say at this we, uh, point it's out. it's about ten, maybe half ten, around this point. And we're leaving in a few hours, right? Well, no, you're leaving whenever you wish to leave. Oh, yeah. I was uh, thinking of heading back to the uh, trading halls and seeing if they'd uh, reconsider because they, they cast me out rather angrily last time. See if I could maybe... Oh, did Blaze catch you up on what happened with Nara? Uh, yeah. I, I have a very vague idea. He found out that you ate the, that you bit into the flesh of people. He was disgusted. He cast you out. But you can certainly yeah. go if you wish. I would like to go and see if I can reconcile. Okay. Wait, As can you... I go to the bookstore? Sure, uh, but we'll continue with Gil for now. Uh, so, Gil, uh, you approach a master and you can see now where it's normally quiet, there's a bustle of activity. You can see various people uh, from the town are setting up tents and such uh, near the back of it. Uh, you know because of the lockdown that a few people have had to sacrifice their houses in order for archers to uh, utilize them, so this is where they seem to be. And you can see... Uh, talking with a few of them is once more Brother Nara. Okay, so I, uh... Before heading over, I... Rethink 
what happened before, and I steal myself for another encounter with uh, someone who clearly does not enjoy my presence. And then I head over. All right. As you approach, Nara, you see Nara's head turn to you, and he show that he just indicates to the person they're talking to that they'll discuss it later before he turns to you and just stands there, arms crossed. I, um... Alright, so I, I bow deeply and try to apologize to him. Is like, please teach me how to fight without killing because what I did before was n my mind wasn't clear and now I ha I feel like something's watching me and I want to avoid it as strongly as I possibly can. As make, much a as I can. make a persuasion check. It's not about fighting without killing. It's about knowing the focus of the mind and the body. I'm not sure if I can train you in the short amount of time we have left, but I'm willing to see just how capable you are. Follow me. And he takes you into the monastery, just slowly pushing people away. Do you follow? Yes, I follow. Okay, so you follow him into the monastery he directs you to an area to the right of you and as you walk out you can see this large area that's it seems to be a perfect well say perfect circle keep in mind the picture won't be but a, it's a near perfect circle of snow surrounded by gravel and as he indicates to one section of the uh, circle he stands at the other side do you join in? Do you step on the one that he said? Step on? English? Yeah, I I, uh, <laughs> I go to the one that he indicated to okay. step on. All right. So, as you stand to face him, he, sim he simply says, Let us see just how formidable you are. And I need you to roll initiative. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, all right. As good as always. Typical Gale. <laughs> okay, so I'll add that, and Nara got that. Okay, so, obviously, top of the round, it is Nara, who, who, you see him place his palms together before going into a sort of javelin throw stance. As, he, as his hands move apart from each other, you can see a long, arcing beam of light seem to emit from his hand and crackle as he throws it directly at you. That is... That's definitely gonna miss, unless... Yeah, no, that is fucking gonna miss. Great. Okay. So as you see, as you're currently distracted by the light, you see it get thrown towards you. Right at the last second, you're able to duck by as it whizzes past your head, crackling in your ear. And he is going to now use his move. He's going to use his movement to run directly at you, and is going to use his key point to do a flurry of blows at you. That is a twenty to hit. That hits. And that is a 12 to hit. I'm pretty sure that misses. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that you take... 8 points of bludgeoning damage. As Nara dashes up, he dips down and uppercuts you square in the side of your chin before elbowing forward, but you're able to lift up your shield and block it right before it hits you. It's now your turn. So I took 8 points of damage. Yeah, you took 8 points of damage. And am I fighting uh, with my weapons or unarmed? Just... That's your choice. Okay. Since... Since I respect him 
as a as someone I want to teach me, uh, as like a strong fighter, I will use my my long sword. Okay. So roll an attack. All right. Uh, let's see. Sorry, I haven't done this for a bit. Okay, okay, sorry. I don't roll attack, uh, just go to my gear combat, my long sword. Right? Yeah. Roll and the... Just no, roll the dice. Roll. Roll. Natural 20, okay, uh, roll damage. Uh, 1d6 on hit. Okay. Plus strength modifier? Yeah, plus your strength modifier, and then double the dice. And then double. So 2d6 or the damage done twice? Sorry. The damage done twice. Okay. So 1d6 plus your strength modifier, then double that. Oh, it's behind. Okay. So 1d6 plus 3. 8 points of damage. Reeling from the blow, you're able to grab your sword and basically do a, a sieve slash, you know pull it out and slash up the sheaf and slice at the same time. It catches Nara completely as off guard as it slashes deep into his torso, sending a spurt of blood spraying. Is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, it is now... The auto's dial. So that's the kind of sword slash it was. It is now Nara's turn, and I really need to pay attention to his counter sheet more because I fucking forgot that fact. Okay, so he's going to do... Two attacks and then another flurry of blows with his next with another key point. So four attacks in total. Uh, that is a eleven to hit. That is a miss. Uh, that is a twenty-one to hit. Hit. Uh, that's a sixteen to hit. That misses. And that's a natural one. <laughs> um. <laughs> So, all of a sudden, Nara just, after putting his his right foot down, he suddenly starts just charging forward at you with a series of short jabs. You're able to dodge most of them, but one of them club as you clear in the nose, and you can feel the back of your throat fill with blood. You take... Nine points of bludgeoning damage from the hit. Oof, okay. Okay, so this is the turn. Next turn. This is your turn. I have. Oh, okay. So bef. Oh wait, no. Uh, I can use Divine Shield as a secondary, like a bonus roll. Yeah, your bonus uh, action. My bonus action, yes. So. I I sent I attack him again. Alright, roll for an attack. Okay, okay. Misses. As you swing your sword down, trying to repeat the same kind of keeping him off guard hit before. But as he's as you're doing this while he's jabbing, when he misses the last hit, he just flicks his hand up and knocks the sword away from him. All right, so that's your okay. action. Yeah, and then I uh, cast Divine Shield, I think it's called. What does that do? Needs it. Oh, is it Divine Shield? Sorry, I, the name is kind of out of my head right now. Uh, there's Divine Favor, is that what you... No, that's a spell. That's different. No, it's, oh, is it a spell? Something, it's something Shield. I'm sorry that I don't know this off my head. It should be on my character sheet. And uh, Magic? Did I put it in there? Shield of Faith? Yes. Shield of Faith, yeah. Okay, let's see. All right, it lasts for... It's concentration up to 10 minutes. Okay. All right, so you quickly just raise up your shield, and as you do, you see the divine energy sweep over it and, and you, as you feel yourself get a, a lot more resistant. That's plus two to AC, so I have 21 right now. Okay. All right, is that your turn? Yes. Okay, so he's going to do... Let's see, that is a... That's not going to hit. That's a natural 20. So that hits. <laughs> and... Think... Oh. Uh, before I do that, I'll just do the normal roll because... I mean, how much health have you got left? 
six. <laughs> yeah, so I'll just do, uh, before I do the bonus action, just... One sec, five, two. You take ten points of bludgeoning damage. Oh, then, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> so as you lower your shield to uh, to keep an eye on him, the last thing you see is Nara doing essentially a haymaker. You feel it collide into the side of your face before you drop down on the floor. After a few seconds of just pure darkness, you feel a liquid go down your throat. You splutter up some of it, but eventually your vision returns. You can see Nara hold, lifting you upwards with a now empty potion in his hands. So that means you've healed. Wow, that was a shitty roll. You heal three points. So you're now <laughs> conscious and on the floor again. Okay. So you're at three uh, health. I'm at three health. Yeah. And. The first thing I say is you, that, uh, wow, you really are a great fighter. And then I spit out some blood. He very, he's able to very quickly dodge the uh, blood that comes uh, flying out as he laughs. And you seem to have resolve. As he stands up, he puts down his hand to, you know, pick you up. Yeah, I grab on, I, I accept the offer. Okay. For a surprisingly, he's not like a very muscular man, but he pulls you up so quickly and easily that it's actually kind of surprising. As he, well, gives, so as he checks you over once more, he uh, looks you dead in the eyes. I, well, that's a lot of background noise there. <laughs> Blaze, can you mute yourself for a second, please? There we go, thank you. Yeah, so he looks at you down the eye and just says, I'm afraid I do mean that we have little time to train you. I've been told by Meganeer that you have your objective, but if you come back later on, if Godmar still stands, then I will help train you and Volker. Mm. All right. But if know both... this, Gil. Mm. Should you revert to the ways of eating flesh and we meet once more next time I will not be here to spare you understood it it will not happen and then I uh I like reach out my hand to for like a handshake he gladly takes it and shakes your hand all right if we both survive these few coming days, then I will definitely be back to train with you. <laughs> I feel that it will be more or less than a few days. And after that, he just walks away. <laughs> well, after after he's out of sight, I like I, I walk away too, and then I kind of just like crumple over on the ground, <laughs> like really hurt. Okay, so you get up to the door leading back to the monastery before you just collapse on the ground and just curl off, just like, oh! <laughs> Everything hurts. Okay. <laughs> well then. After a few, after a few, uh, while you're recovering, Drayen, you approach the shop that you've been told about. You have to ask a few of the people here and there, and that are they are in a bit of a rush. But they eventually point you over to the shop, and standing in there is a Khajiit who seems to be rather twitchy. Uh, are you okay, sir? Have you gone into the shop? Um, yeah. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Welcome to the shop, welcome to the shop. How can I, how can I help you? How can I help you? Well, I was actually looking for something in particular. I have several books. I might be able to help you. <laughs> I'm looking for a book on the language of the dragons and those who specialize in speaking it beyond lesser Dolba. <laughs> 
Oh, so you, 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 you mean to you mean to actually use like to use to use, to use phones, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So rather the what were the graybeards? Was it? The the, the the graybeards. The graybeards never 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 made never made any books about 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 teaching you how to how to how to make how to how to use foom. So it, it, it's it's purely passed by. I mean, I mean, I have a book that has all the has all the words, but but, but it, it won't help you with anything outside of letting you know what the words mean. I see. Then, wait, one that has the words. Yes, yes, yes. That's a, that's a, I, I, I have a book somewhere around here that that that, that has like all the, all the translated words. Thanks, to, thanks to the great bits. It, it, it like translates. It basically like it, it's it's our equivalent. It, it, it translates Dover to to to, to common. Uh, but, but 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 it won't teach you how to how to do, how to do fooms. You, you you need a great bit for that one. I simply just want to learn more about them. <laughs> The, 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 that 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 book m m might help you. Mm. Well, I guess I'll look. Hmm. How much is it? F f f f f f f five gold. I get out the five gold. S s certainly. Okay. Let, let me just. Uh, and he goes into the back room. You can hear a lot of like things falling. A few bits of swearing here and there. Until eventually comes out with a solid black book with um, what looks like the insignia of a dragon on it. And as he passes it, he passes it to you, takes the money, and just very quickly pockets it. Thank you. No, no, no problem. Though, may I recommend that Considering I saw you have a copy on display, that you not openly display the sales of the lusty Argonian maid. It's not exactly the most child-friendly and business-attracting item, so to speak. He looks at you with some confusion here. This, this is not, not, not a kids book shop fair enough <laughs> okay so you all I'll... eventually return back Gil you eventually pick yourself up and drag yourself back to the inn okay yeah so, so we're all here. Looks like it. I mean, obviously, some people actually in the chat are muted. I know Mitch is here. Aren't you, Mitch? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so what do you do now? You're all, you've all reconvened at the inn. Well, have you all made your preparations? <laughs> as as yes. as Gil walks yes. in, you can see he is a mess. He has got blood over him and bruises. And at, when Volker notices, he just laughs to himself and just continues just sitting at the table. Yeah, but even though I'm all beat up and bruised, still have like a huge smile on my face. Yeah, you, 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 you're all smiles. Um, people can see with a smile that you actually have a tooth missing now. <laughs> what did you do this time? <laughs> Got some early training before we headed out. I need to save my heal thing in case we need it. What on earth did you do training with? Dragon? Sure felt like one. We are going to need to tend to this one, aren't we? Just a reminder, because you, you haven't played in a while. Remember, you still have your lay on hands ability. Yeah. Um. 
Just we, are, we are level three right now. Yeah, you're third level, so you can so heal yourself to fifteen. You can heal. You can heal fifteen health. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal it. I, I won't bother you guys. I'll I'll just uh, heal myself up a little bit. Then I use lay on hands. All right, so how many points are you healing? Uh, I'm gonna use all fifteen. Okay. <laughs> Go back to eighteen. Eighteen now. <laughs> I look. I'll I'll probably look a bit better, but my tooth is still gone. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you still don't have a tooth anymore. <laughs> Can I? Can I look at our druid friend? Sure. I'm. I apologize, but ill happens to have us. Well, happen a lot. Though luckily it wasn't arrows. You say Mr. Dark, aren't you? Yeah. 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 And Dark, your mic is muted. Yet he still. Yeah, Dark. <laughs> God. <laughs> This keeps happening to him. Worst timing possible for him. Mm -hmm. Oh. Huh? Ooh, where? Uh, uh, hmm. Maybe he's not here. Maybe. Well, he did say he got back. Yeah. And he did, and right before this exchange, he did talk and say, yeah, he's here, so... Yep. So I'm gonna say... Okay, so, before we go back into continuing that conversation, so what do you guys do now, then? Well, I'm just checking to see if everyone else is ready. I am as keen as this book is dull. <laughs> and it, it is getting dull. There's this, you can read it, you're reading, you're on about chapter four right now, and he's talking about how he apparently entered a cooking contest and won it with flying colors just by never cooking before. <laughs> you can, you don't, there isn't, there isn't a smell, a spell for detecting bullshit, but you're pretty sure you've discovered it. <laughs> I have a new goal in life, my friends. This biography, what? this Jonathan Winterhold, I will find him on my travels, and I will call out his bullshit. <laughs> I will challenge this man to a cooking contest myself if I have to. Um, are we sure we should even let you be around in open fire? <laughs> yes, I am sure. Okay then. Ramy. What do you want? Have you made all your necessary preparations? Of course. Okay, then. And I have to. Okay, we'll say for brevity's sake that Earth Dark is talking, typing, damn interruptions. Okay. I guess, we'll continue, I guess you guys will continue that conversation while you're walking there, so... <sighs> I blame you. I don't know why. Okay, what did so, I do? You're there. So, <laughs> as you all leave Gomar's ground with the... You know, with the instructions of where to find the rope, I need everyone to make a survival check. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm brilliant with the... <laughs> They've only gone well. I'm impressed how low I rolled. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, nothing to, that's nothing too terrible. Okay, well, alright. I still rolled a 7. <laughs> 4. <laughs> I think I hit submit. Oh, no, you did. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I'll survive for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll survive plenty. Wait, I have a plus 3 to survive. Oh, it's wisdom, that's why. It's a wisdom check, yeah. Wow. <laughs> We've entered Bizarro World. <laughs> Would you all stop rolling under two digits already? <laughs> it takes you the good part of four hours. Surprisingly, due to Gil, 
you're <laughs> able to avoid any particularly bad creatures. And eventually, after again, after about four hours, the sun is it's just gone around one or two in the afternoon. You finally find a patch of rock with a slightly weathered but still firm rope dangling from it. Mm. So this is where Calamine pulled stick out. Yeah. Yeah, looks like it's now or never. Is everyone ready? I'm as ready as I can be. Meh. Uh, enthusiastic as always. You know it. <laughs> Alright. If that's the case, I want everyone to make either an athletics or acrobatics check. Oh, God. <laughs> and there I die. <laughs> See, you, fall, you fall and break your neck, everyone one. dies. Oh, acrobatics <laughs> is a plus one, though. What can yep, that's next? where I die. <laughs> 21. Holy crap. He did roll. better than I did. <laughs> I did say roll 20, you didn't like me, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you watch as Raimi just very quickly and skillfully climb up this sheer mountain face using the rope to uh, basically help her upwards followed by Drain and such. It takes about 20 minutes, but eventually the rest of you make it up there. I mean, the rest of the rope didn't just break under my weight. I'm... I'm gonna but you're blame. not a bear right now. No, but I still weigh over 200 pounds. <laughs> nah, they, the, rope, the rope... You can tell that the rope is like a thick, heavy climbing rope, and you know that... You, they don't, rope makers don't know who's gonna use it, so they usually just go for the heaviest. Personally, uh, I'm going to blame uh, my taking so long due to a full set of armor. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I would I would definitely say that. You have to constantly adjust your armor as you're climbing up because, like, the collarbone digs into your neck, cutting off your air and such, so you can't raise your arm well enough because of the pauldrons and such. At some point, you have to actually climb down to the bottom, take off some of the side parts of your armor to climb back up again, but eventually you get back, you get up to the top, being the last one, and you're able to reassemble your armor properly. And, uh... Yeah, I know that feeling. Yeah, now you're in a sort of... You're in a sort of bit jutting out from the mountains. And you can see there's a path to your left and to your right. Uh, anyone remember where to go? I didn't listen. <laughs> oh, boy. Can I look back at the note? Yep. In fact, I'll just drag us over to here. So the blue circle there is where you've climbed up. Zoom. Okay. And there's a and you can see that you've only got a left or right branching pathway, but you know from the map that it opens up generally. I'm gonna get a dog. Hmm. Can I, can I make a history roll to see if I can remember which path sure. is the right one? Sure, make a history roll. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and he just got a brain fart. Magic rock. I'm you, sorry, guys. <laughs> you suddenly remember, you figure out. Ah, so that's how mountains are formed. Ugh. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna look at the. I'm just gonna look at Calamine's letter. Um, there's no actual instructions, but you, it is damp. <laughs> so. So I would say, make a straight intelligence check. Intelligence. Yeah, just a straight intelligence check. Roll a d20. Add your intelligence modifier. So that's how paper's made. <laughs> Interesting. I feel my bond with Drayron grow a little stronger. <laughs> We're geniuses with music. And it is with everything else. 
So, uh, do you want to head left? Is, is there any way we can... You can go either left anything? or right, and you know from the map that uh, Magnea gave you that to the right, not immediately to your right, but if you were to keep going right, you would run into the sort of bandit camp that's holding the mountain pass. Which you know is not the main base. Yeah. So we'll head left. Okay. Dad. Are you uh, are you going to be just heading there normally, or are you going to be sneaking, or how are you traversing the place to the left? Sneaking with a guy in full plate. That sounds hey, fun. Hey, I'm, I'll make I'll make a stealth check to see if I'm ready to stealth. <laughs> All right. If anybody yeah. wants if anybody wants to stealth it, roll stealth. You disadvantage your Yeah, I'm rolling with disadvantage. <laughs> so Yeah, um, that's pretty much what I expected. Yeah. It's like nothing at all changed with the way Gil Ward outside if he stooped over a little bit more. <laughs> Actually it made slightly more noise. <laughs> I will embrace Jonathan Winterhold's tactics of blending in with the shadows. <laughs> And there is a Wait. small section about how he snuck through an entire army of elves during the uh, <laughs> during the Great War. I knew it was bullshit. <laughs> somehow, somehow, Surprise. him in robes makes clanking sounds. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh. You you see that he 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 apparently took just reading the book from of John Windhold. You can see that he specifically mentions how he cut off the branch of a tree and just held it in front of him as he sneaked forward. <laughs> but that el but elves are so used to moving trees that they didn't notice. Oh god. That's racist. <laughs> it's the Argonians that are used to Ama. Considering the hists. Yeah, okay. they actually Oh, seeing this great idea, I also hunched behind him behind the branch. <laughs> okay, so the two of you are walking single file with Lorvo <laughs> holding a branch and it's and it's just making a very loud rustling noise because he is just... clanking noises. <laughs> no, the clanking noise is from Gil who is also behind the two of you. So you've basically got a train of people following. The one-man band, like, yeah. marching parade. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As you uh, walk this way for about another half an hour, I want everyone to make a perception check. Oh, boy. Man, flippin' plastic. Well, a decent one. I'm feeling slightly perceptive today. And I see how Roll20 still hates my... Drain, Dra 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 you, Dra <laughs> you find what... At first, you think it's a pine cone, but you realize it might be another magic rock. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that on the either, down low. either it's a magic rock, or we get some frozen pine nuts. No, oh, right, I forgot to open when, that. When, when. <laughs> so that's how pine cones are formed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Gil Lovo, you notice, yes. you can see to the right what appears to be some wooden, like, palestines sticking upwards along with what appears to be a gate. And to your left, you can see a light up in up high in the trees that occasionally flickers in a weird, irregular pattern. So maybe it's because we're, we're so bad at being stealthy, we can take time to look around. <laughs> <laughs> we're, like, uh, peeking out. God. Well, this is just while this is just while you're normally walking. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean you can stop it and do an, and I'll let you do another perception check if you want, but the DC will be higher. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Yeah, no. So you and Lorvo both spot um, what appears to be the entrance of a base to, far to your right, and to your left you can see relatively close a sort of light that's occasionally glinting, like something metals uh, being reflected off the sun. Hmm. Uh, can I go over and check what's on the left? Sure. As right. you slowly approach and you get closer, you realize that the metal, the bit of metal, 
is a dagger, which is held by somebody. And as you look, and as, and in a blur of movement, as it drops down, Kalamin uh. stands up to meet you. <laughs> ah, Kalamin's friends. It's nice that you finally made it. Honestly, uh, surprised that it's you lot over here. I, uh, uh, I'm just left speechless. <laughs> uh, and you can see now that he's standing up facing him, he definitely looks like he's been for a bit. It's like, he doesn't look injured per se, but he looks tired and very, like, he's been exposed to the elements for a while, you can see. But he seems to be in good spirits. Oh, n- nice As to see you. He's hella mean. Uh, it's, good to, it's good to see you too, my friend. And, uh, n- notices gonna fucking get the name right eventually. <laughs> Garak's Paul. Garak, Garak, fucking... I will wait Goxapol. until the day he gets Hey, there you go. <laughs> and uh, who is uh, this one? Not so sure, to be honest. But she seems to help us out every once in a while. I got bored. <laughs> Ketamine likes you. Yeah. Now then, we don't have much time. Come, follow me. And he leads you towards a small rock outcropping where you can actually see he's appear to have made camp. As he, as you eventually all get around, he sits down and uh, basically you can see on the ground there is a very poorly drawn out uh, map in the dirt. One which you guys can't really understand. <sighs> so, Kalimin has been here the last two or three days. Kalimin is certain that this is the Bandit King's main camp. Now, there's two ways in that Kalimin found during one of Kalimin's scouting trips. There's a front gate, which you saw. Needless to say, not a good idea. But there is also an underground area. Uh, Kalimin would assume it's like an escape path or something like that. But potentially, Kalimin thinks we might be able to sneak in there. It, there's just um one small problem with uh, the escape tunnel. You want me that? Shut it, kid. Uh, well, Kalimin may have been spotted during his last time doing this, so Kalimin may now know that there's guards there. You can see his ears has kind of like dropped slightly in embarrassment. I didn't even hit your mouth to stop. I'm going to. It was a numbers game, wasn't it? Yeah, well, when you sneak into the main base alone, Maybe having allies would be a good idea. I mean, it's good that we have that information. We wouldn't have it otherwise. Hmm. So, uh... This is Kalimin's plan. If we can uh, take out the guard that's in the tunnel, then we should be able to get to the Bandit King. Kalamin will make a distraction as well to try and draw the guards. But, uh, and he indicates to himself, you can actually see as well that one of his gloves is missing, and it's, you can see his claws in that one are very, like, bloodied and damaged. It looks like he's been through a little bit. Uh, Kalamin might not uh, want to lead on this one. I Oh, I can help distract. I'm not exactly the most... Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, he looks around and, again, uh, it looks like uh, Volker and, uh, what's he called? Hoss isn't here? Uh, Who to me? They will... They're guard. They're guarding the front. Uh, well, that, that would probably be helpful. 
the point is, uh, people like you, the the muscle, shall we say, uh, will be needed against the Bandit King. When I got caught, uh, might have saw him, not one that you wish to underestimate. You want to those? Uh, how big? Hey, yeah, you can just type it for now, uh, Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> Since there's a lot of background noise. Since he pretty much has a goddamn hurricane of voices going down. Yeah. Uh, size isn't the issue here. Uh, it's strength. Uh, I'm led to believe that he is, uh, how you say, a spell sword. Oh, I can spell sword. No, 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 no. S W. <laughs> no, oh, you. I um, knew he was going to be retarded there. Mm. <sighs> this, this was a mistake. <laughs> it was. No, I mean he conjures weapons of power. Powerful weapons that can cause a lot of damage. Depending on how much of his own energy he puts in. I, um... I, Kalamin, cannot handle that. So, Kalamin will take the rear guard, if that is okay with you. That's fine, you're already injured. So, uh, y you definitely don't have to take the lead. No one made for sound like my mouth is full of eating pizza at the same time. <laughs> Kalamine is uh, not hurt, but uh, Kalamine is tired. Yeah. The weak and injured should not take the lead. I'll go on ahead. Uh, well, very... I'm 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 injured, but uh, it's it's fine. I'll see yeah, Kalamine, Kalamine noticed what happened. Uh, training. Training. You have very interesting way of training. Well, it was, it's, it's kind of making a new friend. I think he likes me. Given how the last friend you met, Valka, you got shot in the chest with an arrow. Yeah, that makes sense. I. It's it's a bonding experience. It's. Uh... It's how he typically makes friends. One way, Kalamin does not wish to do that. Anyway, we're running out of daylight. Let's go, then. And he slinks off to... Essentially keeps going towards the left. I want, everyone, I want everyone to make a stealth check. <laughs> oh, God, stealth. Okay, before I make the stealth check, I'm... I'm limbering up my my armor. Let's hope this is a good one. Like, why not just ask Blaze to start singing instead? It'll do the same thing. Shit! <laughs> hey, for once he's not being a dickbag. <laughs> Fucking roll twenty. <clears throat> uh, how in. loud am I being, guys? Come and roll the natural nineteen. Uh, I'd say you fell on your face. Uh, Mitch, have you done a self roll? Uh, oh, I was. Uh, yeah, I probably. Uh, it didn't submit. Mm -hmm. Still submitting. There it goes. There's like a delay. Between all of you, you're able to keep quiet. Eventually, at one point, Goxapol just essentially bear hugs Gil to stop the. Um, armor from rattling about and just starts carrying him. Better. <laughs> Quiet. Eventually, Quiet. after You're... a few more minutes, you round a small, another small rock outcropping, and you can see a small wooden door in the side of the mountain. And standing in front of it, looking grumpy and cold, is a bandit. He looks really grumpy and cold. Kalimin he knows he's been standing there for the last, like, two days. Oh, that that's awful. <laughs> Feel for the man. That's terrible. Maybe so. What say you... And he pulls out uh, one of his daggers. What say you uh, 
Let him have a bit of a rest. Ah, uh, yeah. That, that's a good idea, just, uh... I'll be watching. I'm not, I'm not so good at this. I mean, you can carry me to him. I could, uh... Calamine would prefer we take him out from a distance. That that's Gil. understandable. Gil, you start some javelins, right? I I mean I I haven't used them. I I could throw them, but <laughs> I haven't practiced in a long time, and I gotta take them out. <laughs> uh, so, don't we have someone with a, a bow and arrow? Raimi. Yes, right. Can, can you can you deal with this this guy? He's a little in the way. is that an ask? All right then. On the count of three, we'll go. Wait a minute. And he he flips, he puts his dagger back in and rummages about his pack and finds his crossbow that he had used previously. Ah, uh, knew I had this somewhere. Okay. He loads it up with a bolt. You can see with his bolt pull, bolt pouch, though. He has very few of them left. Yeah. Let's make this count, then. Would you Would you like to throw a javelin? I'm good, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Alright. On my signal, Raimi. One. Wait a second. Don't, don't use a crossbow. It's loud. It will attract attention. Just leave it to me. Okay, I won't use the crossbow, but I'm still using this. And he pulls out the dagger again. Kenimin does not I, take chances. Can I can I shake the javelin slightly like eh? <laughs> Kenimin is good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Wait, can I throw a rock? <laughs> what? If you want to. Okay, okay. it's not one of the magic rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you just pick a random rock from the ground. Yep. Okay, on Kalamin's mark. One, two, three, go! And so, uh, Drayen, Raimi, I want you two to make an attack roll with advantage. It was advantage, does that mean we rolled two? Roll twice, take the highest of the two. Okay. Uh, for you, Drayen... Uh, just make an, it's a normal 20 roll. Okay, yeah. natural 20 for Emma. Free. <laughs> okay, um... He's dead. Okay, so roll damage, uh... Yeah, so roll damage, uh, Raimi. I got a roll for Kalanin. It's that much. He gets a sneak attack damage. And he also get. it's also a crit because he's a fucking assassin. Oh, Wait, doesn't Emma also get crit? Yeah, so yeah, so seventeen plus that. So yeah, I don't even yeah. know why I'm wrong at this point. I, I think he's dead. Yeah, no. Uh, you watch as without a sound, the um, dagger and the arrow. The dag, the dagger just goes hilt deep into his forehead, and as he as his eyes open in shock, you see the arrow from Raimi's um, bow go through the underside of the mouth and out the back of the neck, just clean through as it clack, as, as it rebounds off the uh, rock and shatters and the banner just collapses to the ground dead. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, go. Uh, do we have to reroll stealth check or is someone still carrying me? Uh, no, it's, there's no one around you at the moment. Oh, okay. Okay. So as you all run up, uh, you see Kalmin just struggle a little bit, but eventually pulls the dagger out of the uh, guard's head and just drags the body to the side. He um, examines the door, pushes it slightly, and it slowly opens. As he looks inside slightly, he can see that it, you can see that it's fairly dark, but there is some light. Okay. Uh, Kalamin will deal with the body. Uh, if you head down there, there should be a sort of... Um, a sort of cave area. Leads to three branching areas. Uh, wait there, Kalimin will show you where to go. Or at least point you in the right direction. Okay, go, quick, quick! Okay. okay. And you can see as you all start running, you can see him basically, like, 
you know, trying to throw as much snow as he can over the guard. I hope he's still not grumpy. Practicing a knife to child. What? So, so, so we're, we're waiting for him now, right? Yeah, so you run yep, down here. you run down the passageway. Um, and eventually you get to a iron gate that's partially open. You open it, it does make a slight screeching noise, but you just uh, focus on getting to the center area. And yeah, as you stop, you're in a it's it's a little cramped, but it's you know there's enough space for you all to move. As you wait there for a few minutes, you um, hear footsteps coming from the passageway you just came in, and you see Kalamin just slowly walking, looking back over his shoulder every now and then, before he looks at you and smile as he grabs the gate and slams it closed. You hear footsteps begin t uh, to show up from the other entrances as you see Kalamin take a key out from his pocket and lock the gate. Sure. Uh, I, I think I think we need to leave that way, Kalamin. You're Shut not up. going anywhere. I'm sorry about this. But Kalamin knows what's best for him. At this point, several bandits come around the other corners there's about eight of them in total coming from each passageway the passageways are large and from behind Kelamin you can see another four bandits several of them have their bows pointed directly at you all one of them steps forward one which you recognize the high elf that you had met the day prior well, it, it took long enough, but at least we now finally have you where you want. <clears throat> My king's merciful, so we'll give you a simple option. Your option is to drop your weapons and surrender. And what's the second one? You always give a second option. Even I think you can point. figure out what that second option is. Man, this is just oh, like Captain Fix. I have a third option. Do you want to hear it? No. Well, too bad. I pick up my alchemist grenade and I just throw it at him. <laughs> As she does that, can I let out a howl? Okay, uh. I can't figure out what the second option is. You're gonna have to tell me. <laughs> God, <laughs> God. <laughs> Uh, with the alchemist grenade, I'll say make the, I'll make the I say make the attack, but with disadvantage. Uh, You're attempting to throw it a very long distance through some bars. The funny part is I could escape this place no problem anyway. What Wait, would you say that they're would uh, you say that they're all around us? As in, so you're standing in a cave, uh, a sort of it's not circular per se, but there's four branching paths, one which you came in and then three others, and there are bandits on all four paths. <laughs> what, what dice do I run? Uh, roll d20, add your dex modifier. With disadvantage of it, as I said. Hmm. Disadvantage is taking your s smallest throw, right? Or roll. Yeah. Okay, I just want to know. You roll works. two d20, you, you roll twice and you choose the lowest of the two. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's, no, that's you rolling two d20s plus four. If we were to go by that, then you would have made a five. That would have been a five. Mm. So you throw the grenade, but it clips the top of the cave and just explodes harmlessly. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you again. What's the second option? <sighs> the second option is that we kill you right here. Oh, I see that, thank man. you. I see then. Okay, how many times did he get hit in the head exactly? I make I friends very often. <laughs> I think they're in your head. I look at my, I look at my rapier and start to take it while she's off my side while letting, while mimicking a 
puppy is Wimpera. <laughs> How many of them do you have? I just want to know. Two more. <laughs> she just keeps chugging them. I like how they just don't care about Again, that. disadvantage. <laughs> Wait, should I roll for something? Nope. Not yet. Mm. Okay, that's good to him. Jesus fucking Christ. So, yep. yeah, it's 15 uh, plus 4. 19. Yep, that's that definitely hits. Uh, what's the damage for it? It's, uh, it's just called Alchemist Grenade. I don't know the damage. <laughs> Uh, you threw something that you don't know what it is. It should have been written in the alchemist grenade thing. I'll just, I'll just roll a d4. Wow. I have no so it's as strong as a punch. As strong as a <laughs> Look, we don't, it's got no stats on it, so I'm just gonna say for the sake of it. Uh, it says 5d6 fire there damage. There you go. There you go. Okay, 5d6 fire damage. Five always punches. Right is. <laughs> That's literally a d4. I could punch him in the face harder than that. Us. Okay. So the grenade hits the uh, hits the high elf as he instantly bursts on fire. As the the other bandits start to basically try to pull him out, four of the bandits that have bows are gonna take a shot at you, Rainy. <laughs> tired of Wait. It. Wait, can we uh think about the options yet? Is it too late? <laughs> Uh, I'm not even armed, hit. though. I can't even follow their Four orders. For the second. <laughs> Nine for the third. Thirteen for the fourth. So I'm pretty sure only one of them hits. So you take six points of piercing damage as one of the band as the bandits send a volley flying your way and one hits you hard in the on your left leg. Eventually, the High Elf is able to just get the flame sword out and just said, Right. My king is merciful, but I am not. Do that again, and I will make sure that you are the first to die. And I am not asking again. Drop your weapons. Hmm. Uh, I'm still not armed. Wouldn't the, ex wouldn't the grenade... <laughs> Explode all the bandits. Because uh, he's a, he moved he stepped forward to address you. I said he stepped uh, forward to address yeah. you. So uh what'll happen if we drop our weapons? Why you will meet the king, of <laughs> course. I drop my biography on the ground to say like the only thing this book has ever caused is psychic damage on yourself. And I just sit there. I drop my rapier while still mimicking the whimpers. Still looking dumbfounded, just I'm not armed. I never pulled down my sword, so I'm just gonna sit down. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't sit down, I just stand. Yeah, you clanking machine. It's, All right. it's a little hard to get up if I sit down, you understand. Drop. So as the guards <laughs> slowly file in, all of them keeping their bows now pointed directly at Raimi. They eventually grab you, tie you up. They, the High Elf points to you, Paul, and says, Watch out for this one. Keep a knife to her throat. I have a very small smile on my face. <laughs> okay, so you are all tied up. Some of you are gagged, particularly Lorvo and Drayen. You two are gagged. As you are all, dr oh. as you are all dragged up through the various tunnels, eventually you go up a set of stairs into a large courtyard where you see 50, 60 bandits all just talking. As you step out, they see you, and a loud roar begin of victory begins to come from them. They take you into an a large grand building which is surprising given that these are bandits and as you are led inside you can see sitting on the throne a tall nord if 
if you've seen what Dante looks like in DMC, he looks a bit like that, but obviously taller and a lot more grizzled and weathered. And not as badass. <laughs> Uh, they all drag you in and put you in a rough line and just basically like dig their foot into the back of your leg forcing you onto your knees as um, as the high elf walks on to uh, stand next to the bandit king the bandit king hmm what so the bandit king uh, he hasn't been looking at you guys. He's kind of just been sitting, you know, with his back on one of the armrests and his legs, you know, draped oh. over the other side. He just looks at you guys and says, Oh, finally! I thought it wouldn't... I thought it'd take this long for you guys to be here. I get you myself! I know I butchered the English language there. Sorry. Multitasking stuff. Shut up. <laughs> so he stands up and he stands very tall. You can see he's got some rather fancy, like, fur... Uh, attire and some and thick, very, you know, studded leather armor. As he walked forward, he has his hands together. So, you guys are the bastards that nearly ruined everything. I don't like how you're saying nearly. <laughs> Correction. <laughs> you are currently gagged, Lovo. <laughs> yeah, Sounds what he said. Right. <laughs> Time to be a smartass. Oh, really? Nearly? Okay, okay. Why don't I tell you this, huh? Because then maybe you can see how you've nearly fucked everything up. Let's see. Uh, we were able to get our man on the inside. That still worked, thankfully. Uh, we were able to get our supply of weapons. That, thankfully, because you guys were too slow. What else? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Our launch point's gone. Thanks to you guys. Uh, let's see, we now have the strongest Jurid of the local Jurid Circle alive and one in us all dead. That's your guys' fault. And what else? Hmm. Oh yeah, our plan to make Gunmar go crazy. Yeah, one well, of you guys took the potion, didn't you? Uh, so, yeah, you guys kind of nearly ruined my plan. Ah, but where are my manners? Where are my manners? I am, as you may be aware, the Bandit King. Or Belaris, whichever you want to call me. I don't really care, it's just... Uh, hungry Mole, as he calls himself, wants us to use aliases. And you have all been here because I have willed it. Kalamin, and Kalamin had actually followed you all in, um, and he's just basically standing behind me. You see him just shuffle slowly forward. Uh, yes, my king. So these are the ones that have caused the problems, yeah? Uh, that is correct, my king. Uh, this, uh, Dark Elf is a new one, but, uh, I believe Milliard has, uh, had previous experience. Millard, Milliard looks very angry at uh, Goxapol. Um, mm. Whatever, whatever. So, here you are now, in my court, really? at my mercy. <clears throat> I gotta think of all the stuff I gotta do to you. That's what kings do, right? That, Millard, that's what kings do, right? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> hmm. Now let's one on one battle. Mm. How about I kick all your asses and we get out of here? Oh, I like this. I like this one, Millard. I like this one. Definitely has a lot of guts one to it. One versus one. See, see, I'd love to go with that, but um, yeah, you know, I'm lazy. Eh, eh, I would call it more, uh, oh, what's it called? Delegating it, I suppose. Yeah, delegating, that's the word. Yeah, delegating. Yeah, I'd rather delegate it to you guys. Um, so, 
Let me think what to do with you all. Millard, why are these guys. Why are the gags on them, not all of them? Uh, it's. It's. It's because my king, one, they never shut up, and two, uh, Hamid himself has told us that some of them are users of the arcane arts. Rather not risk them throwing spells around. Hmm. Well, I suppose if uh, Hamid says that, then I'll believe him. After all, he said he'd get these guys to me. Okay, for the God's sake, can we at least pull that guy's off? <laughs> and one, the, one of the bandits, anymore. one of the bandits, just walks forward and just <laughs> rips the band, uh, the uh, the gag off you, uh, Lorvo. Oh, thank God! Can I please have some water? Oh God, he's still talking. No, no, you cannot. <laughs> no water. Uh, fine. Can I have some apple juice? <sighs> You know, why didn't you gag this one, Millard? <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like these bandits. These bandits are awesome. Well. I'm surrounded by Exactly. Okay, you can kill that one if he, keeps, if he keeps talking. I don't want to look at him. Anyway. So. With you guys out of the way, we can now... Oh yeah, that's a thing. Millard, send the signal. And you see as Millard... Reaches behind his back, and you can see on his back there's actually sort of like what looks like a bone model of a bow. And as he uh, he doesn't grab onto it properly, but as he does, you can see arcane energy just pull off the bone. Oh, uh, can and I? Can you up? Can I try to imitate his voice and be like, Millard, never mind, don't send the signal. <laughs> <laughs> Extreme deception on the neck. <laughs> You're gonna fail this one, oh <laughs> Um, <laughs> you can try. You can. You can certainly I try. I I will just 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 to just to appease you. Go ahead and roll with disadvantage. Yeah, it's an extreme disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, I figured as much. <laughs> I think he choked on his own words. <laughs> you know, correction. You can actually kill him if you want. No, no, no. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. God, so you see, as you see, as Millard. Um, pulls back the bow and fires an arcane arrow he seems to go flying outwards and as it flies out you can hear once again behind you a uh, loud cheer raise up and the sound of several footsteps going right well hmm. you know Hamid told me not to do this but hey I'll do it anyway how would you guys like to join us wait uh, hold, hold on a second well, I mean, you guys offer. kind of killed some of my best men. I mean, don't get me wrong, you'd have a bandit with a knife at your back all the time, but, uh, you know. Um, does that mean we get to be untied? Like, no. Do we uh, have a choice? Of course you have a choice. You always you do. do. Then, then I kick your ass and we escape. Trust me, even if you did that, Hamid would kick your ass anyway. Although, judging by your faces, you're not too sure what I'm talking about, do you? Hey, Miller, you think we should tell him? Um, my king, I'd rather we not. Nah, who cares? I'm, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna just give him an annoyed look. <laughs> so, why don't I tell you a little story here? about this entire plan. The plan was that one of our own, Hamid Mignonir, would go in and take, over, and take over the area. Imperial people, my Imperial people, would take it over. But then you guys showed up and ruined everything. The other plan was Millard selling a potion to Nora, our lovely person who doesn't actually know who we are, and with that, gun mode. Go. <laughs> For fuck's sake. You know, I'm actually of agreement with you here, buddy. <clears throat> now I've lost my train of thought. Can we put a second gag on him? 
It's not going to be enough. Probably not going to be enough. You're right. Ah, you know, you guys make me lose my train of thought. That reminds me, which one of you has my bag of holding? Uh, <clears throat> you, you, cut out. you cut out, sorry. I said, which one of you has my bag of holding? Uh, I don't know. Not, not it. Kalamin, which one of them did Hamid give the bag of holding to? Uh, Kalamin's not too sure. Kalamin can check. Uh, isn't ev excuse me? I have a question. Isn't every bag a bag of holding? Oh, for f <laughs> <laughs> can oh I just God. join them already? <laughs> They're retarded to hell. Do you, um, Gil, can you slap Gil's head with my tail? <laughs> uh, Gil, you I take one. You uh, actually, let's roll it. Let's roll her patience just for the fuck of it. Uh. <laughs> Gil, you take one point of bludgeoning damage as a as a bandit behind you just backhands you across the side of the head. Oh, well, okay, okay, fine. Uh, Kalimin will check, I guess. And so he heads towards um, you, Lorvo, first and foremost. Uh-oh. So he, he goes round to the back and you can feel his dagger poking him back. He says, Don't do anything that would rouse suspicion. Did you hide your dagger? Just to check, Lovo. Um, I mean, I, I never explicitly said I hid it. Uh, but, make it, uh, make a slight hand check. Okay. Uh, no, no deception. Actually, not slight hand. Deception. Deception. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on what she's trying to do right now. What is it for exactly? If Kalamin can find his dagger, his fire dagger. Huh. Yeah. Not very well hidden. Why yeah, did you he see... put it in his belt? <laughs> yeah, he. You feel it's like tugging on your belt as your as the flame dagger like slightly lights up for a second before before its flames get quenched, and you hear Kalimin go, "Ah, Kalimin was looking for that." And he pulls the dagger away rather forcefully, but surprisingly, you can as he walks away, you still feel a dagger. He mm -hmm. walks over to you, Gil. Does a check, uh, just for record here, who actually has a dagger holding? I'm I'm pretty sure I have it. <laughs> I thought it was either me or Gil. <clears throat> I don't. Excellent. Okay. So, you, once again, you, like with Lorfo, you feel a dagger slowly uh, tap against your back as you feel his hand rummage around and eventually finds the bag of holding. As he pulls away, you feel a slight sort of tugging feel on your ropes as Kalamin steps um, over you and passes the bag to Meganeer. Right, perfect. You know, this was really stupid of me to give it to him. Now let's see what's in here. As he does that, you hear a loud explosion uh, come from the underside of the base, roughly in the direction of where the cave was. And as, as Belarius, the bandit king, uh, looks up in surprise... Kalamin is going to make an attack on him. <laughs> and the second one hits. That's pretty... Wow, how much is the price I hit there? That was really low, <laughs> but it's... Uh, that's uh, 1d4. He's using the flame dagger that he just took from Mitch, so that's that. That, that. I gotta roll a lot here. So, 7 for the sneak attack. Only 2? Really? <laughs> the king's quick on his feet. Apparently. Uh, Have a troll face. <laughs> That's still 19 points of damage to uh, Belarius. As 
Yeah. Poor little baby. Sneak sneak attack plus... Oh, wait, no, it's also a d10 because it's sneak attack. Fuck, I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's... Okay, so that is 24 points of damage to Blarius. As you see the flame dagger just erupt into flames, as it is, and plunges directly into his back. Kelamin then quickly kicks the bandit uh, Belarius away and jumps over to the back of where you are, Gil, and is going to, in this last bit of the surprise round, he is going to try and cut through your bounds. <laughs> uh, advantage, because he's damaged it. Nope, he's, he fails at cutting through it. Wow, really? And then he stabs the guy. Ouch. <laughs> No, he didn't stab you, but, uh... <laughs> ah, shit, I gotta shift some of this stuff around. Uh, so I gotta get rid of that, because he's not here. One, two, three, four... Actually, that's all of them. <laughs> hey, cool. That was perfect. All right, I like okay. the entire thing. I still had a smug face, because I know I can escape whenever I want. Yep. Well, if that's the case, I want everyone to roll initiative. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. Yeah, where's the turn order? <laughs> I didn't click my character, but oh well. <laughs> it doesn't matter, you can just put me at the bottom of the list. Oh wait, uh, you're supposed to click your character? I mean... You click your character, then you click your initiative to put it directly in the list. Fucking hell, Kalamin. Okay, should I roll again or just keep the 9? I'll keep uh, the 9. Okay. Keep the 9. You rolled the first one, that's it. Yeah. Okay, where's my health? Do 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 it's not letting me select mine for some reason. Weird. Uh, it should be. I've got it all enabled and everything. Oh, well, I can't choose mine. Alright. I didn't have to click on mine either. Do, 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 Let me do, see do, do, do. if I can... Uh, no. Uh, see if that does it. I... Why did I close that down? No. That worked for me. Fuck yeah. Oh, there, there we go. I got it. Mm. No, I'm not. Not that one. There it is. I gotta refresh the page. Though. Yay. <laughs> oh, there geez. we go. <laughs> Drearin's raring, raring to go. I'm trying to. Why is this not letting me add. Come on, add turn. Add turn, damn it. Uh, there we go. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. <laughs> what? Okay. You. 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 Oh no. Really? Okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, There's a lot of rolling to do here. Give me a second. I love Final yeah, Fantasy 14 music. It's really good. Yeah. That's why I have the game as well. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh... I think that's everyone. Is it everyone? That's everyone. Looks like, looks like we didn't run out your patience yet. <laughs> Surprisingly. Okay. Drain, it is your turn. stupid comments keep happening. Huh? It's your turn, Drain. Okay, wait. Can I try to get free... Can I try to bite through my gag? Yeah, sure. Make a shrimp check. Arm, arm, arm. <laughs> Oh god, strength. <laughs> Why did it have to be strength? Because it's your jaw. It's supposed to be your strongest muscle. <laughs> In this uh... one, you you think you might have thrown your jaw out of whack for a second there. How the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> so you still got your you still got your movement. You're currently classified as prone. <laughs> what? Yep. Did you even try to chew through it? Did <laughs> He rolled a one. 
I'm actually impressed considering he talks too much. He should have more strength than that in his jaw. <laughs> Can I use a bonus action to try to muffle out what can vaguely be described as wolf howling? Sure, make a charisma check with disadvantage. No oh boy. Okay. I mean, if you think really hard, it does sound like a wolf. <laughs> you just got to have a good imagination. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so. It is now Calamin's turn. So, uh, keep this in mind that um, Gil, you're currently unbound. Oh, okay, yeah. Because Calamine cut through your bounds right before the uh, end of the surprise round. So Calamine is also, because he's the one that's actually holding most of the weapons. You feel the you feel the hilt of your of your sword press against your back, not your shield. You don't have your shield equipped. But you feel the sword. That's what he's going to do as an action. As a bonus action, he is going to, with disadvantage, try and cut through Drayton's. Binds. <laughs> Fails. He, he rolled two fours in a row. Impressive. Uh. <laughs> At this point, he looks towards you, Gox Paul, and says, I know what you're good at doing. Do it. <laughs> okay. It is now the Bandit Mage's turn. Who is going to make an icicle attack against Kalamin? That misses. As Kalamin very quickly dodges as the icicle goes shooting over its head. <laughs> Belarius, I need to actually get my fucking spell sword thing up here because I've never used it before. Hmm. I wasn't actually expecting us to get this far. I was actually gonna call it I was actually gonna call it good right on that attack, but I've got a bit of time, so that's why. So apologies, I uh, haven't got this open. <laughs> Murder time. Yep. So he is going to use his summon weapon ability at first level. So you see as Blarius just throws the bag of holding away and just like Arches his back slightly to try and get the pain out before reaching backwards on it. And you can see he's also got a wooden model of a great of a uh, great axe. And you see as he pulls it away to purple arcane energy arcs arcs by, and as he put as he slams his hand down, it fully forms into a great axe. Uh, that's okay. actually going to be his turn because it's an action to do that. Garxapol. Well, we're going to do the fun part of, I'm transforming into a bear and those damn bounds are just going to snap. I will say make a strength check with advantage then. I don't have any strength. I literally triple in size. Double. <laughs> well, actually considering how small she large. is, I'd say it's triple. Hmm. You know what well, I mean. Those bounds would have to be extremely stretchy. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt they are. And even if they are, how are they going to hold a bear? Okay, uh, I'm not going to use a bear miniature. I'm just going to... Roop. Uh, there you go. Oh, God. I will say currently you're in rough terrain because obviously you got the post here and Remy's directly next to you, but you are now a bear. Uh. Bear lady. Rar. <laughs> yeah, you can't speak. Oh, that's hmm. fine. Is this still in bounds? Yep. All right. I'm going to have yeah. some fun. So does it take an action to transform into a Whoops. bear? No, it's a free action. What? Uh, okay, so 12 plus 5, 17. I literally bite off his fucking buns. <laughs> yep, so Raimi's hands are now unbound. And now, just for the fun of it, I do to have another attack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, make an attack on the wizard. Yes. Where is it? 
Arg. There it is. Uh, and I miss completely. Oh, well. Yep, that misses. As you you struggle to like squeeze through the gap without trampling on Remy, and as you do, you're trying to make a lunging bite attack, but it completely misses. Just snaps the air in front of the wizard. I think he's shitting himself right now. <laughs> Compared to the bandits that you fought before, this one's actually retaining his composure. Impressive. Not for long. Gil, Wait. it's your turn. Alright, so I have my longsword, right? No shield? Mm -hmm. No okay, shield. Armor is reduced by two. Mm -hmm. Then, um... Alright. I have my... Okay, I have my longsword out, or is it just free to draw it? Uh, you can you can pick up as a free action. It's kind yeah. of resting on your hands right now. Oh, okay, then... Yeah, I, I, I take it out and put it in my hands. Mm-hmm. So I still have my bonus action. That's a free action. No, that, that was that was your, you still have your bonus action because picking okay. up your sword was just free action. <clears throat> so then, can I cast thunderous smite on my sword? Sure. Ooh. All right, I do that, and then I run over to Kingman. To Belarius. Okay. Belarius. Yes. I. Oh, Belarius. Belarius. I, I can't move my. <laughs> You can't? Okay. No. Weird. Let me just see if I can fix that. There we go, see if that does it. Uh, yep. Yeah. Got full control, yeah. thank you. And obviously you used half the movement to stand up because you're classified as prone. Yeah. <laughs> but you are, but you are, you were still able to make it, so yeah, you can make an attack. Yeah, so then I just make an attack with sun thunderous smite. Let's see. Alright. Um, he just steps to the side slightly as the as your sword swings wildly. Okay, off balance without a shield, <laughs> but we'll try that again. But I, I can't do anything else. <laughs> no. Okay, I was gonna say. You shall smite the air. <laughs> okay, so this guard over here. Why is it not? Let me drag it. That's why. Going to roll up to Kalamin and is going to make an attack on him. What's with these rolls? Misses. Uh, excellent. Okay, Raimi, it is now your turn. You are currently unarmed, but unbound. And Kalamin has your equipment. Yeah, but taking your bow, taking your grenades, Kalamin's currently holding on to him. So is that a bonus action? I I would say as a bonus action you can take your no as an action you can take either your as a bonus action you can take the grenades or as an action you can take your bow and arrows. What about my dagger? Kalamin's got that as well, unless you ha unless you chose to hit it. Yeah, I hit I hit my dagger. Okay, make a side hand check. We'll see if it was found, or a deceptive check even see if it was found. Yes. You save your hiding your weapons, guys. Why, sh why should I hide my weapon? <laughs> no, it got, it, got, what it, it got found and taken, so you don't have any weapons. You can get either the dagger or the or the grenades as a bonus action, or your bow and arrow as an action. I'll take my, my dagger as a bonus. Alright. So you run to Calamir, and while Calamir's dodging, you just see him flick... Um, Obviously not in an aggressive fashion, but just flick um, one of your one of your the dagger to you, and as you grab it, you've now got your dagger. Can I move behind this guy and uh, sneak attack him? Uh, uh, not sure it's gonna be sneak. Five. If I move to the back of him, because he's engaged with him. Well, that would give you an advantage, but you wouldn't be. Uh, he knows you're there. Yeah, yeah. He is very well aware. That's I would. What I mean. You've used yeah, half your movement have an to get up. You've moved. You use half your movement to get up, so you won't be able to get to the back of him. Yeah, I use fifteen. Yeah, it would take fifteen more just to get uh, behind him. Yeah. Okay, you so, can get that. Yeah. Behind him? Right, no. Fine, yeah. You could go like here, Max. Actually. 
Oh, let's see. So it's half it. It's movement speed 30. Well, so 15, yeah. 10, 10. Yeah. Because yeah. you had to move five feet to get to kill him in. So you can get okay. there. Well, depends. If she did that, she could reach there afterwards. We're just doing an arrow live show here. Jumping. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm gonna stop is an idea. Okay, that's a 20, so yeah, you can go behind it then. Because it's obviously we're going to be disagreeing. I just let the dice roll to it. So yeah, you can go there. Well, now it's an attack with advantage. Mm -hmm. Ooh. That doesn't hit. Mm. Yeah. He's a resilient little shit. <laughs> Does he turn around with his buckler and just be like, stop that? No, he just scrapes off his armor. Mm. <laughs> It is a dagger, after all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this other bandit, seeing his buddies under attack, is going to run forward and make an attack on you, Raimi. That is not going to hit. That's a, that's, a, that's a nine to hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should put the AC up. Du -du 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 -du. That's, yeah, that's going to miss. So yeah. that's his turn. And so I'm going to do this, this... So Millard is going to take. Let's just hopefully we can wrap this up pretty quickly, given what time it there is. There we right go. Now. So Millard is going to make an attack on you, Garzapol. <laughs> hey, I'm actually getting the name right, I think. You are. Okay, so it's that. So that will be. I'm not using this dice again. That's an actual two. <laughs> <laughs> and the bear is extremely easy to hit. That's the worst part. Yeah. So the arrow just goes flying in and misses. Lavo, it's your turn. Okay, I would so say something, but I'm not. A question I've had here: mm -hmm. the way it looks, this whole place is made of wood, correct? Yes. Oh, for fuck's sake! Oh no! But you are bound and you are gagged. Oh wait, no, you're not gagged anymore. But you are bound. Oh shit! I'm bound. Well, you can still get up and run around. Yeah, but it's he can't cast. Idea. It's a good idea. He can't cast, though. I'm gonna, like, stand and run for the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. So that's 15 feet, which is half your movement, and then you can get around here. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do right there. <laughs> you can also dash, if you wish. Uh, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> uh, let's see, that's next to 30 feet. Now we'll get you out the door. Are you seriously just gonna book it out? <laughs> oh, he's, he's gonna get I can't book. do anything with my hands tied. You do have you a dagger suck. in your hands. Oh, that's, that's right, that's right. And you could cut the bound with those. I'm gonna try to cut the bounds. Alright, get some roll back. For fuck's sake. <sighs> Ten. It takes a bit of work, but you just are able to cut the um the binds off so your hands are now free okay that's my action mm -hmm. and that's your turn drain you're still trying to bound <laughs> still can i to try bind. to get the <laughs> bindings off my mouth again yeah make a the strength gag. check <laughs> that's gonna be cute roll a one again <laughs> he just goes Bleh. oh no Ooh. you bite clear for it this time but that's her action. That's actually impressive considering well, it is. Event. Yeah. I'll be honest, you're not just going through once, you're like nibbling until he gets through. I guess he went through it once, he was just angry. Yeah, so you still get your bonus action on your movement. <sighs> okay, with my bonus action, I'm going to hop. <laughs> You want to what? The Calamine side, like right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then basically, the, like, you fabulous bastard, you had me going. As well as giving him some bardic inspiration. So that's a d6 for him. Okay. Yep. <laughs> right, so we'll say you hit and you just give him inspiration. Calamine just says, uh, thanks, uh, not time. <laughs> not time, not, not time at all. <laughs> Okay, Calamin is going to 
no, sure. He's Let's gonna see. turn around and make an attack on the bandit. Pretty sure you can use inspiration for attack rolls, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. For touching, yeah. Gonna use that, I think. Plus, yeah, that's not gonna hit otherwise. That'll hit. And because Raimi's next to him, that's sneak attack damage. And it's gonna be with a flame nah. dagger. Well, it gives you advantage, but you don't have sneak. No, sneak attack damage. As, as a rogue, you get sneak attack damage if there's an ally huh. adjacent to him. Impressive. <laughs> nah, I'm just gonna keep killing stuff. Two, um, three, six, eleven. Well, wait, did you roll your advantage, actually? No, I don't need to. It, yeah, they both nah. are. Well, I, just I did it anyway. Your... Mm. I did it anyway. anyway. It was, that was a free, so it, it's still a hit because of the first roll, but it's just not going to be that. So he takes three, four. I rolled both always in case I get a crit. Five, six, <laughs> nine. You'd be so, surprised how many crits I got like that. So that bandit takes 14 points of slashing damage. As Calamin just quickly, basically backhand slashes into the uh, bandit's face. You see him reel away with his face bleeding and partially burning. He's not looking too good, that bandit. <laughs> and as a bonus action, he is, with disadvantage, going to try and break Drayen's bonds on his hands. Nope. He rolled a four. Good thing I can still do things with just my mouth. <laughs> okay, so you are a bard. So I need you, Goxapol, to make a Constitution saving throw because the wizard is going to do hmm. frostbite. That's a problem for me. I suck at Constitutions. Wait, don't you get the cons? Uh, yeah, I have the bear Constitution. I forgot. Yeah, where is it? Bear! Oh, it's a 16. Slightly better, but that only adds... Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, I'm... No, oh, I'm still at 9. <laughs> you take... Really? You take 1 point of cold damage, and you've got disadvantage on your next attack. Uh, uh, what? You've taken 1 point of cold damage, and you have disadvantage on your next attack. That's cute, because I have 2 attacks. <laughs> oh. And that's his turn, so it's now Blarius's turn. Who is going to make an attack on you, Gil? Uh, what? I hate these rolls right now. That's a four. <laughs> I, I, I slap it away with my sword. <laughs> okay, that's his turn. Got to bully Alright. For that's a king, point. you really suck. So I got a 14 for the first attack. And an 18 for the second one. That, yeah, that hits. Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Both of them, or just the last one? So, well, the first attack, you, I thought that was with disadvantage. The first one is disadvantage, so it has 14. The second one has 18. Then both hit. Roll All damage. Alright. So, 1d8, 2d6. So. The first attack... And the second attack. Oh god, I pretty damn low. Oh well. It doesn't matter because you literally rip that wizard apart. <laughs> I, I'd say I feel bad, but I really don't. It got mauled. Yeah, Quite literally. So, for my movement, I'm going right here. Have fun with your advantages. <laughs> oh yeah, I will. <laughs> okay. Gil, it's now your turn. And hi, Archer. I'm waiting for your face now. <laughs> Alright. Now that I have the balance figured out, this is how you make an attack. <laughs> and then he misses again. <laughs> Please do. He actually does. <laughs> I'm impressed. As you swing just your sword down, you see Belarus just raise up his arcane great axe, and even though it's arcane, when you hit it, it feels real. I mean, mine's cra <laughs> mine still has electricity on it, I still have my thunder smite. Yeah, so it crackles along the the arcane great axe, but nothing else happens. So we're just having a sword battle in the middle. Basically, yeah. Sword versus axe. Okay, so you really need that shield. You suck with your balance. 
So the I'm working on it. <laughs> so the wounded bandit is going to make another attack on Kalamin. That actually hits! Amazing! So Kalamin <laughs> takes eight points of piercing damage as the spear just digs deep into the side of his stomach. Uh, oh. Remy, it's your turn. That don't feel bad. I will use a bonus action to heal myself. Vision of healing. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and use it then. Okay, so you heal six points. By music. Um, can I attack, sneak attack this guy? Yep. Oof. So with advantage. That'll hit. That'll hit. So go ahead and roll your 1d4 plus dex plus your 1d6 sneak attack damage because you're level 2. Yeah, so 1d4 plus your dex modifier, and then just a d6 in addition to that. Oh. But so that's the damage from the dagger, what? and then a d6. <clears throat> Boop. What? You try to go for a step again, and this time it cuts clear through the armor directly into the small of his back, as you see the bandit arch backwards in pain as he collapsed on the ground dead. Did you just cut his liver? Okay, so it was a perfectly good liver. <laughs> yeah. Chris, you could say I delivered the kill. Hey! Hey! I'm keeping busy. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's your action. So you still got your bonus. Oh, I know, you use your bonus action to heal. What am I talking about? You still got your movement, but I imagine you're not going to move. Okay, so it's now the other bandit's turn. Who is going to. Hmm. Yeah, he's just going to make another attack. That is a 22 to hit. That hits. Oof. You take. Okay, you take... That was a natural one on the damage. <laughs> you take four points of piercing damage. Okay, I've also got to put this in. There we go. Whoops, I skipped Millard's, but whatever. Millard's just going to make an attack on Guard's Apollo with disadvantage, because he's point-blank range. <laughs> I'm not even going to do the second roll because that's a natural six, so that's not going to hit. <laughs> that's, I'm trying to Why speed this is along. everybody aiming for the bear? Because you're, <laughs> because you're a big bear. <laughs> Lofo, it's now your turn. But I'm a cute big bear. Okay, not really. I'm covered in blood right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Lofo, it's your turn. Don't mind the mage in the corner and the pool of blood. Mitch? Yes. Okay. So. You have a straight line. I do. <laughs> <laughs> this can only it. go horribly wrong. Uh, <laughs> yes. I, I was debating. <laughs> Alright, is the door open? Yes. Like it is in the picture. Okay. okay. Oh, God. God damn it. Alright, let me. Run away! <laughs> And then you use fireball. I gotta get closer. Alright. Yep, yeah, I gotta get closer. Okay. So I'm going to walk about here. And then I gotta make my cone. Here we go. <laughs> it's gonna be fun, isn't it? Oh boy. It's 29, so it's... Oh no! 
Wait, is, is Gil in that? I can't tell. What? No. Okay, good. Dog's a pole is, so. Um. Mm. I, I can go, I can go a step further. I'll go a step further. Be careful, I already don't like anyone. <laughs> <laughs> He's still in it. I don't think I want to fight an angry bear. Well, you could fight more once I level up a little. Oh no, he's not. Okay. So. So how much little damage are you gonna do to a bear? This is gonna be fun. Oh no. Hmm. I'm gonna cast flames. Okay, where's the radius that you're gonna cast it 15 from? Fifteen foot cone. Okay, which yeah, direction? Is like, is this the center? Uh, yeah. Uh, that oh, I might have to take one more step forward actually before I do that. So forward like that. Yep, Gogsapol yeah. is still in that. That is unfortunate. And I have a 16 for dodging it. Okay. <laughs> so what's, what's I the... roll before they say it because it it always curses me afterwards. What's the... so it's a dex check. What's the DC for it? Uh, it's against my spell DC, which is... Lower than 16. Yeah, probably. I, I gotta find it on this sheet. I'm not quite used to it yet. Uh, DC. 13. So I take half damage. Excellent. Oh, did the bear dodge a flame? Millard does sure. not make the save. It's a roll damage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm the bear just ducks. Bear. Oh, he danced around the flames. Don't ask how. <laughs> it's a dancing 20. bear. <laughs> Wait, what? And just like that, Millard the High Elf, for the second time today, <laughs> sets on fire. <laughs> but this time he doesn't extinguish. Wait. Uh, can you put him just, out real quick? Just avoid that whole part of the room. Yeah, hey, you, but... put that out! <laughs> uh... Is Not that actually again. the damage there? <laughs> so, yeah, so, Goxapol, you take 10 damage. Mother Thumper! Oh, wait, one sec. Wait. Wait, hang on. Uh, Mitch? Yeah? Is the damage 1d20? That uh, sounds a bit high for a level. Yeah, wait, why did it roll a d20? You should roll 3d6. Well, why did you roll a 20? Roll I just clicked six. the roll thing next to it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Roll 3d6 and add 5. I get the feeling this scenario is going to end the same anyway. <laughs> He'll be okay. Alright, try this. Can we be a little... Yeah. Pretty close. So, Gox, pull, oh. you take nine points of damage. Does <laughs> a match with Millard, same situation. <laughs> cute damage. <laughs> <laughs> Very can, cute. Can we be a little less lethal? And uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna draw it per se. Actually, now just fucking. Well, let me draw it. There's that entire corner. This is of the just like fire. Mr. Winterhold in his book. Mm. Yeah, this is a best I'll do. So this entire area, oh, that looks ugly. Never mind. Whoa. But simply, that entire area is now on fire. Can we? Uh, do you, do you know any ice spells? Water, like. I hope you're not talking to me. <laughs> there, because right. literally roar. Yeah, it's oh, Drayton's turn. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need Bandit King to roll a wisdom save. I've actually got his. As I just give him a glare and begin to whisper, watch. What's the watch everything you have worked. I'm whispering this. Watch. Watches everything you have worked for. Watches it all comes tumbling down. What's the DC for it? Oh, 13. He makes it. Okay, so he'll only take half damage from this and will not be spooked. Alright, what's the damage then? I'm rolling it. So, four damage. Yep. Psychic. Okay. Uh, don't know. And he has to make a concentration check to keep hold of his weapon. That fell. I'm going to use another dice because it fell. Natural one. <laughs> so as you watch, you watch as he just looks towards you, Drain, and is 
blade just instantly vanishes. Well. Okay, it is now Kanamin's turn. He uh, is going to... Coming... Uh, BRB. Yeah, you know, he's going to go and just get behind this bandit and do a sneak attack. <laughs> They're just sneaking around this poor man. <laughs> they both both attacks miss, so it doesn't matter. Sure. Uh, that's that guy. He's dead. It's Blarius' turn. He is going to use his action to summon his Grey Axe again, burning a level 2 spell slot. So I'll just have to do that. I'm trying to get this finished. Uh, Guards of Hall, I imagine it's going to go for Bolaris. Is he here? No, he's on BRB. No. Nah, he just went BRB. Uh, so he just made a bigger axe. Yeah, basically. So... Uh -huh. Drayron, he has a bigger axe now. Right. Don't worry about it. I did the He's attacks. not going to last much longer. Probably not, given how... Yeah, one of those attacks actually hit. I'm doing Gargsapol's attack for him. Yeah. So that means he takes 10 points of damage. That's a d12 I'm rolling, not a d10. Makes a save for that one, though. That's a lot of coughing. Sorry, that was my dad. Goffing. So that's okay. So I'll just do that. So I do dark spells. Gil, it's now your turn. Uh, would you say a minute has elapsed? No, that would be ten turns. Oh, okay. Well, then or I still have thunder spite. So I will. I have mastered this type of balance, and I will attack him one more time. Make an attack with advantage. Alright. That hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Alright, it's 1d6, but I have Thunder Smite, so it's technically 3d6s. Mm -hmm. plus, plus your strength modifier. Plus 3. Yes. Because my strength modifier is 3. Just double checking, sorry. Yes, okay. Here we are. 3d6 is plus 3. Do I just add on 3 yeah. once? Just I'll once. just do plus 3. Okay. This is gonna hurt. And hurt it does. So. Man, <laughs> now I'm rolling good on the concentration checks. Fuck. Uh, <laughs> but the Bandit King is looking very, very rough. So, I, I don't know if it matters, but also... Uh, you can hear lightning for 300 feet. <laughs> that doesn't do anything with this. Uh, Raimi, it's now it's your just, turn. It's just very loud. Can I... Can I attack the bandit? Be very careful. It's going through my, like, arm. Yeah, I'll say go I ahead and... Sleep. Yeah, I'll say you can, but... I wouldn't say you get advantage with it, even though they've got one behind him. Because it is he is facing the direction you guys are fighting. Yeah, he is so looking right what, at you. What should I roll? Uh, roll it. Basically rolls if you were doing a melee attack with the dagger. <laughs> with disadvantage? No, just normal. Oh, okay. Don't worry, I'll duck. <laughs> a d20? Yes. D twenty plus six. Yeah, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. One D four plus your dex. Wow. How do you want to do this? <laughs> uh, so I turn to face him and I say. Remember, remember when I said I was going to kick your ass? And then I threw the dagger straight at him. Okay, so as you throw the dagger, you see it spiral through the air before it lodges deep into the side of his neck. The second it finishes sinking in, his blade just vanishes in an instant. And you see him just slowly start leaning to the side. He tries to pull the dagger out. 
and then collapses dead. Okay. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah, you guys seem to do that with bosses. <laughs> Still this bandit's Wait. turn. Yeah, there's a bandit. So he's going to, once again, in a fit of rage, make an attack on Raiden because he kind of just killed the king. That's a 15 to hit. Does it... That just hits him. Wait, can I use my a cutting word on the bandit as he does that? Sure. Okay. So what do you say to the bandit? I let's look at him. Remember something I actually saw within my book. Take a deep breath and then go. Zoon Halvik. Of course, it's not actually a shout. It's just the words. What? <laughs> so as as he stabs forward, he hears and just like, whoop, 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 and lifts up his shield towards you. <laughs> but it's so he basically stops the attack. Lovo, it's your turn. Mm. All right. So, it occurs to me that I should probably at least attempt to put out the Yes, spider. please. Please do that. I'm Before it gets concerned. very unmanageable. Let's see, what do I have? Press the digitation, make yep, a little bit of it go that's, away. That's all I can do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, tap at it, like, oof. <laughs> You're able to clear a five by five foot part of the flames, but there's still a lot more on fire. I mean, would he be able to clear? I guess he'd make it look like it wasn't on fire, but the ground would still be burning. <laughs> uh, so is that your action? Yep. Okay. So uh, Otherwise case. this whole place is going to burn down. Lorvo, isn't, isn't that patch of ground still burning? No, that is out. <laughs> Like, I, uh, I can put out fires You with can it. put out fire. Oh, yeah, you can snap your fingers, right? It's your turn, Drain. Drain? Drain. Okay, I'm... I'm going to hop over to the last remaining bandit. Mm-hmm. And can I leave and try to dropkick him? For fuck's sake. <laughs> I would say... Make an attack that, that, roll with disadvantage. Yeah, that'd be really bad. Fucking interruptions, I hate. D -d -d nope. Just you. Ah, <laughs> God. I leap and. You leap then and you flop. leap. And you do a drop kick, but you misjudge how much you're lifting your legs up, and you land headfirst on the ground. I will say you take a point of damage for that fall. I just cringe <laughs> like it is. Okay, it is now Kalamin's turn. Well, I tried. <laughs> he is going to make an attack. That's with advantage. Natural 20. Okay. Dead. Probably knowing Kalamin. Um, three. I just realized I haven't even been doing off rank attacks with him. Doesn't really matter. Um, as the bandit turns around um, in fear at this attempt at a drop kick, you see Kalamin take one step forward and just jab the dagger directly on the underside of his mouth. He struggles slightly before going glimp. And that is them all dead. Um, the building's still on fire. The building's still on fire. Uh, yeah, we need to start getting rid of that. <laughs> as <sighs> as the battle dies down, Gogsapol, make a perception check. <laughs> With advantage, I'll say. I, I, I can put the fire out, I think. Please do. <laughs> Why? How, how big is the fire? Whoops. In, in oh, well. It's a 20 foot cone. Uh, I'll roll it again. It fucked up. Oh well. Uh, right. So that's a 16 for that one. Uh... Looking out the window, Goxapol, you can see 
roughly in the direction of Gunmar's ground, you can see smoke rising. Not mm-hmm. not campfire smoke. Large. Black large, smoke. Yes, black smoke. And you can distinctly uh, hear the sound of screaming and clashing blades. That's where mm-hmm. we're going to end it for this episode.